everyone. Thank you so much for coming to my presentation about Rich Snippets. Oh, sorry. Can everyone hear me now? Nope. And now, better? OK. OK, good. Thank you. Sorry, there was a bit of problem in my slides. Um, yeah, but it's OK now. So thank you so much for coming to my presentation about Rich Snippets. Today we are going to talk about Rich Snippets and how they help your SEO. Uh, but before that, um, I'll just introduce myself. So my name is Neha Patel, and I am a web developer and a designer. And I've had the privilege to speak at WordCamp last year and uh, this year as well. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a really great experience to be part of such a great community. So uh, let's dive in. Oh, and I don't know what happened. I saved my, okay, yeah, everything is there. there <laughs> There's just one error here. I don't know how I deleted that. But if you guys want to follow the slides, then it's at this link, or I posted it on my Twitter. So you can just open the slides and follow along. Does everyone see the slides? Uh, the link to the slides? OK, perfect. So before we start, um, I'll just go over the outcome, what we want from this presentation. So by the end of the presentation, I want you guys to learn what Rich Snippets is. Now, how many of you have, the, have an idea what Rich, Rich Snippets is, right? Rich Snippets or Rich Results. Great, awesome. Um, have you guys, all, now I know some of you may have already implemented it. Cool, awesome. So, uh, so we'll look at basic steps from the beginning What's rich snippets, what Rich Snippets is, and we'll also look at, oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, what Rich Snippets is, and easy to follow steps in order to implement Rich Snippets on your website. Now, we'll also understand the different kinds of schema that you can implement on your website. So all the steps will be easy to understand, and it's easy to implement for anybody. Now, when I use technical words, don't worry about it. Um, I'll have a definition of everything in the upcoming slides. If I use a link to show demo, don't worry about it either. Uh, everything is on the uh, uh, everything is on the slides. Okay. So, what are rich snippets? Simplified definition. So, rich snippets, which are also known as rich results now, are enhanced search results that search engines show to a user. So, you know, when you Google something or when you search anything on a search engine, it shows a bunch of results, right? And not all the results are optimized to have rich snippets, but some websites are optimized to have rich re results, is that it doesn't have just a link or meta description, in it, in the result, it has much more information. Uh, let's say, for example, it's, um, it's a recipe. Then you'll see ingredients, or the time taken to prepare, or the picture of the recipe. Everything will be in the result itself, instead of the boring uh, text and a meta description. That's called rich snippets, or rich results. Now, a technical definition would be, Rich snippets are a result of structured data markup that site owners can, site oper operators can add to their existing code, right? Now, to improve the way, this is done to improve the way search engines read your content. Now, search engines cannot read everything and understand everything, whatever you write on your content. I know that you can use H1 tags to tell it that this is the main title of the, your content or you can use H2 to tell it if this is the subheader. Uh, but in order to give it more information that it can show in the search results directly, you can add structured data to your content. Once again, if you hear terms like structured data or schema, don't worry about it. The explanation of each and every term is in the upcoming slides. And when I say represent, 
to improve the way search engines read and repre represent your page in SERPs. I'm, so SERPs means search engine results page. So the pages uh, in which you see the results of your search is known as search engine results page. Now let's take a look at some rich results. So I'm just gonna search something. So I'm, I'm gonna search for the reviews. I'm gonna search for the reviews of the movie Rampage. Now, when you scroll down, you see that the results does not, the first two results does not just have um, a link or just the description, it has much more information. Like, like the average rating or the reviews or um, what, what date it was released or what genre is it, or written by who, stuff like that. All that extra information is shown directly in the search results because of the use of structured data in their content. And the other sites, you see that they do not have structured data, or Google does not yet read their structured data. Sometimes you add your structured data, but it's not necessary that Google will pick it up right away. Now, let's move on to the next step. We now know what, that rich results and rich snippets can be obtained by adding structured data markup to our site. But what is structured data markup? So, in easy words, structured data markup, when, so when search engines like Google, Bing, Yahoo, or they crawl your website, they're trying to understand the content of your website. And structured data markup is code that helps search engines understand the content of your website better. So structured data is code, semantic voca vocabulary, which is used to organize your site content. It's a machine-readable language. It's basically code that you can add to your site to make it easier for the search engines to read. What? So now many people would think that, okay, but I have used H1s, proper H2s, and proper link, title, link titles, and proper alt tags in my images, and it was fine. Google can understand what my image is about, or what my H1 is about, right? But, it is true, but structured data takes it to the whole new level, like we saw an example it displays much more information right in the search when you use structured data. If you have questions, we'll just do the questions in the end. So like the beginning part will be just explanation and then we'll do a demo of how to add the code to your website in different ways. So let's take a look at an example and we'll analyze it. So We'll Google chicken vindaloo. If someone's vegan, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, search chicken vindaloo. Okay, so the first result is a YouTube result. It's a YouTube video. But the second one is um, a recipe from geniuskitchen.com and it has ratings in the information, it has reviews, it has number of calories, and all that stuff. Some of them in the bottom does not have all that information, so now we are just going to open up this. And I'm gonna inspect. So, sorry, no, I don't have to inspect in this one. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right click, view, I don't even have to do that, sorry. <laughs> you just take the link because this site is live. So we can test its structured data just by grabbing its link from the, and then structured data testing tool. This tool is also listed in the slides so you don't have to hurry to, it's called structured data testing tool by Google. 
then you put in your URL in the fetch URL option if your code was just HTML code or any type of code which was on your local machine, you can still test it by adding it into the code snippet. But because this site is live, we can directly plug in the URL and then run the test. This one takes a half a minute. They have very detailed information on the structured data. Okay, so when you look at the results, all this information is due to the structured data. So is it visible? Yes. Okay, perfect. So you see that all this information is added through structured data. It says that this page is about, this block of information is about recipe. What type of information it is? Recipe. Main entity of the page, it is the main entity of the page. Okay, chicken, the name of the recipe is chicken windaloo. It has also much more deeper information, cook time, prep time, total time, everything is added into the structured data. Now Google can only read this if you add it in structured data. So it also, they also added the recipe ingredients in structured data. So when Google searches for recipes, when Google looks for recipes, when you search for recipe in, the, in Google or any search engine, and Google tries to, tries to find a good recipe, the, this recipe could, be, could get more preference because all the information is properly organized. So that's why structured data is helpful and this is how it looks when you test it through Google's structured data testing tool. Now this one is also a new feature when you can preview how your rich, snip, how your rich snippet would look on Google. So when you do a preview, you can see how your rich snippet would look on Google. So you can test it out. Okay, let's go to the next step. Now, do I need to know coding in order to add structured data? Answer is no. But the basic knowledge of HTML and HTML, HTML will help because you need to know, you need to identify what tags are used, you need to know what a starting tag is, ending tag is, all those kind of things. Do I need to know how to edit WordPress theme templates? So, no, but we won't be editing any theme templates today. We'll be just adding structured data to some code. But it is really helpful when you have errors in your structured data. So one year ago, I was using a theme for my WordPress website, and I had a lot of structured data errors because the theme was built in with structured data, and it was in my HTML, so it was really tedious to remove that. So it's helpful if you know how to edit templates so that you can fix the errors. Now, once again, if we are discussing some technical terms and you don't understand, don't worry about it. We looked at RIT snippets. We now know what RIT snippets is. Structured data markup. We now know what structured data markup is, SERP, search engine results page. And we'll take a look at schema. So different ways we can add structured data markup. Now there are three different ways we can add structured data markup to our website. So it's schema, microformats, and RDFA. RDFA, I never looked at it because it's not the most commonly used. Microformats, it's used, but it's not as widely used, and schema is the most widely used. Now, what type of structured data does WordPress already support? So WordPress templates come with some structured data already. So let's take a look. I'm gonna open up the demo of 2016 theme. And is my voice clear? Just, just wanna make sure. That I'm not moving. Okay, okay, perfect. So I'm testing in the structured data testing 
I plugged in the link for the demo of 2016 theme in my structured data testing tool. And you can see here, it's H8 atom type of structured data, H entry. This is called microformats. We won't go deep into microformats today because we are going to discuss about schema. Microformats is not as widely used it's still used some, uh, at many places, but not as widely used, whereas schema is the most widely used. Uh, do we have any people who use schema or microformat? Microf both? OK. OK, OK, cool. So today we'll discuss about schema markup. So schema markup is the most widely used structured data format, and it can be added to your website using three different methods. Microdata, JSON-LD, that is JavaScript object notation linked data, and RDFA. JSON-LD, you can call it JSON, JSON, people call it differently. Okay, so let's take a look at schema.org. So, Schema.org has the documentation and all the detailed information needed to add schema markup to your code. How do I add schema to my WordPress website? Now, there are three different ways. The first one is we can use a plugin, and one of the most common plugins used is all in one. Uh, all-in-one schema.org with snippets. Now, uh, if you look for schema, mar if you look for plugins to add structured data to your website, you'll find uh, lots of uh, plugins. But all-in-one schema.org with snippets is is the most, uh, it's the bet, it's a good one, it's a good one. So, uh, pros and cons. The pros are it's easy to use. Um, you can select a schema type, choose the target, and mark up your existing content. So it's fairly easy to use. But you can only use one schema per page. But at times, you'll have more than one schema on your page. And at that time, you'll need, you, this plugin is not really helpful. So there are limited type of schema. That's one problem. Review, event, people, product. Um, recipe, software application, video, and articles. So those are the only limited type of schema that this plugin supports. So if you have something other than that, then this plugin is not so helpful. So we'll look at an alternative. Second one is adding schema to your HTML directly with microdata. So normal HTML without markup. So this is how the normal HTML would look like. There is a paragraph tag, and you have an organization's name, which, is, which has a link, and the organization has a sponsor, Globo Corp. Now, let's take a look at it, how it looks with microdata. Now, with microdata, it looks like this. Item scope here, which is going to highlight it. So, the item scope in the paragraph tag tells it that this chunk of information is about something. So that is the starting point of some of a schema mark of a schema of a type of schema, and when the p tag ends, it's the end of that type of schema. So. And then item type, but just by telling it that this is the scope of this, of this type of schema, it's not essential. It's not really helpful, right? You need to specify what type of schema it is. So then you can add item type. It's an organization. You have to take the canonical URL. And all the types of schema are just listed over here in schema.org. So Basically, you have to just, so, and it has all different kinds of attributes. It also has examples. 
so you don't have to remember anything, you take a look at one of the examples and you can copy the code also. So we added item type organization. Item prop is used to give additional information about the, that schema. So item prop URL is used to tell it that this is the URL of this organization's website. Item prop equal to name means here it's telling that this is the name of the organization, National Public Radio. Let's take a, let's copy this code and I'm gonna test it in the structured data testing tool. New test. This time I'm taking a code snippet instead of the URL. So I plug in the, I plug in the code and I run the test. So you see that all the, all the information is nicely organized. It has a type, it is a type, what type is it? It's an organization. That's the URL. It all, you can also add a sponsor. And in that way, there's, there are a lot more additional fields that you can add. Now, let's take a look at the next one. Schema markup is microdata that can be ad added anywhere in your site. So you can add it to your header, to your footer, wherever your content is, in the body of your website, anywhere. And it can be slightly tedious to fix because now you're working with different tags. So if you mispronounce something or if you forget to end um, a tag or if you, if you forget anything, every, all, this, all the structured data is now in your code. So you have to be really careful or it will show errors. So let's see how it looks when it shows errors. So let's say here I forgot to tell it that it's an organization. So it will give me an error. So I deleted the part that it's an organization. So it's, it's showing that its type is thing. So, <laughs> so that's how it works, so you have to make sure you write the tags properly. Now, the third method and the most easiest and the friendliest way to add it. So, let's see how we can add schema to our WordPress site in JSON-LD format easily. Oh, by the way, did I mention that schema.org is a group project by Google, Yahoo, Bing, and Yandex. So it is built by them for the developers so that it's easy to understand the content on the websites or in anything, applications, websites, anywhere, emails, structured data can be used anywhere. But today we are just talking about rich snippets. So now we'll take a look at how you can add structured data with JSON LD. So, step one. So, this is how it looks like when you have, um, when you uh, have the schema in JSON LD format, and you can also take a look at the examples here. So, all the examples of all the different types of schema is already listed on the schema.org website. So you don't have to remember anything. So basically, it's an array of all the information about a schema type. So here, I have organization, and then inside it, I have address of the organization, the description, so all the data is properly organized. So I say copy. What I'm gonna do is open up um, open up a demo site. So, dashboard. So this is on my local machine, so we'll have to test it by adding the code to the structured data testing tool. So first of all, I go to a page. I go to add new test, 
in the content, I'm just going to add lorem ipsum for the time being. Here, I already added a custom field. So I'm going to add a custom field. I, in my website, I already added a custom field schema. So uh, it was already there. But you can add custom fields by this button in the bottom, which says custom field. So custom fields are used to add additional information about your page, like metas and stuff like that. So I added a custom field called schema. And I'm going to paste my JSON LD script here. So all I did was in the value, I added the information that I copied about my organization in the JSON LD format. I'm going to hit publish. I'm going to view this page. Now there's not much information here. And because this site is on my local machine, so I'm going to do view page source, control A. I'm going to copy it and test. Code snippet, paste all your code here, run the test. So now, whatever content I added shows up on this page. So my data is nicely organized. My structured data is nicely organized in the form of organization. It has a description, name, telephone, address, and all that information. Here I have an image that I randomly added. I thought I could preview it. Oh, no, OK. For the organization, you cannot preview your information. But if you add a recipe or anything like that, you can preview the information. Or maybe you can preview it when it's online. So, so you add the structured data in this format. Oh, wait, I forgot a step. So in order for your site to see to fetch the well, uh, to fetch the schema um, custom custom uh, field you have to add this code so after adding a, um, a custom field you have to go to your editor and you have to add this code to your header.php what we are doing is we are telling that if we have a custom field called schema, then call that custom field and echo it. So I'm going to go to my theme, header.php. So in my theme, I already added it. So before the ending header tag, you add that function. So you're taking a variable schema, and you're assigning it a value, get post meta. So you have to get the get post meta uh, uh, ca calls for the po post meta. So if you have custom field, then it will take the custom field schema of that page and print it. Uh, echo it. So after that, you save it. And then basically, you just uh, you just do the step that I did. You add, test your page first in the in the structured data testing tool. That's it. You you open up the page. You do view source, and uh, you test it out in the structured data testing tool. So step three was just testing out in the structured data testing tool. So I'm just going to go over it again. So you take this code and add it into your pages custom fields. Give it a name schema, because our variable's name is schema in the function. And then second thing is take this code and add it to your header.php. So there are different types of schema that you can use. There's also a schema for video. And all those schemas are listed on the schema.org. Also, Google gives a pretty detailed guide. So here is the guide from Google about using 
the schema markup for video. For if you have a video on your page, then you can mark up that as well. Adding product schemas. So if you have, let's say, products on your page, then you can use the schema that is for products. So right now, I'm not, I don't have any products on my website, but what I can do is, I'm just gonna go here, just show you how it looks. So, um, schemas, gonna go to product. So let's see how a product would look. So I'm gonna take this micro data format and plug it in the structured data testing tool. So let's say if you have a product, then by adding structured data, search engines can read much more information about your product than just some description, and you can also preview it. So this is the snip, rich snippet how it will look like on Google. Then, if you have multiple entries. So if you have multiple entries, then you have to, if you have multiple entries, then you have to add more than one, or you, you can add more than one uh, script type in your, uh, in your meta value. So you, I'll just test one out. So in here, when you add the custom field in the value, you can add this script multiple times. Any number of times um, uh, you want, you have structured data on your page, you can repeat it. You can use different types of structured data on one page through this method. So structured data can do a lot more than just about, uh, but this presentation was just about rich snippets, but it can do a lot more than this. You can build knowledge graph, you can build, um, uh, you can also use it in emails, because you know these days you can see in the emails, uh, you can see much more information than just text. You can see your flight time and flight destination and stuff like that uh, without even opening the email or reading the email, just in the preview. So that can be done through structured data. And structured data improves. So when you add structured data and your rich snippet is, um, has much more information than the traditional link and the text, then the chances of getting more clicks, uh, you have more chances of getting clicks. So people tend to click on the information that's clear and precise, right? Um, but if you have just links or if you just have some text description, then people tend to click less. So if, if search results show more information, uh, it's better for you. So there are some important links that I included. Structured data testing tool, then there's a guide by Google about all the structured data, and schema.org, which has all the information about structured data in detail. So all the structured data are listed in detail on the schema.org website. And that's it. I have a error in my email. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Yes. Extensions, as in, yes. So he's asking, uh, there are extensions on, you said extensions? So, because it's an open source project, you can create your own structured data 
and submit it. And if it gets approved, it, it gets added to the schema.org. But so if you're saying it's a medical, let's say if it's a medical organization, and even if you, instead of organization, you write medical organization, um, I think it should still approve it. Like, does it, does it show an error when you add it? Missing. Yeah, sometimes some properties are missing or you might have wrong information in that property, then it will give an error. Yeah. Yeah, and even if you have errors, it's okay. It's just that Google won't show it. But actually, you just don't want Google to misrepresent something. If it's error, if there's an error and it ignores it, it's okay. Make sense? If, it's, if there's an error in it and it ignores a value, it's okay. But if you add a value and Google understands something else, then it's a problem. So I tend to not leave any errors. Because I read a lot about errors in schema or if it affects your ser if, if it affects your SEO, and it says that errors does not affect your SEO, but I just don't want to take a chance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Any yes. Yes, no worries. <laughs> Yeah, it's like much deeper information. Yes. Yeah. Item scope being like the the block of this block of information is about a schema type. It's about some type of schema. And then all, the will be all the properties will be item prop. Uh, item type will define what type of schema it is. Wow. Make sense? Yeah. So if it's a URL, you give item prop URL. If it's, uh, let me give an example. So there's an item prop price, availability, so currency, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it won't give any errors if you have them both, but it's so. Actually, it's a good question. Yeah, so the question was, is it okay to have schema and microformats, both type of structured data in your content? So when you have like a WordPress theme and there's like microformat from by default, you can still add schema. It doesn't really matter. But you can't have, uh, you can't have same information in schema format and microformat. Yeah. Format, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. No. 
it's a script, so it goes in the head section. The good thing about it is all the information stays in one place separate from your body. So you don't have to mess with all the tags. On the top, yeah. 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 Yes. And what happens is when you get errors, it's very easier to uh, fix the errors in the JSON LD format because it's not mixed up with your content. Your content is separate. So it's additional information. So it's, uh, it's here. All the information is. And my slide has like step by step information to add it. You have the link to the slide, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Um, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I think it has services. Reviews, events, products. Yeah, limited. So there should be a services. <laughs> Sorry? OK. Cool. So he said structured data JSON LD plugin that can uh, with that, you can add any type of uh, schema? Yeah, you can add your drink club on all pages, the uh, LD space between the uh, content first and the drink between the JSON format and the JSON. It's just a couple of lines for the drink and back end. And it goes all the way to the top. But then it will be the same as our third, third way to add the schema, right? Yeah. yeah. Because then you won't, if you use the third method, then you don't have to use the plugin. Basically, the way he's saying is the plugin gives you a form to fill in. But if you look at the format of all these, um, of all these schema types, then they are really easy to understand and easy to read. So you don't really need to use plugin, right? I mix them. You mix them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, perfect. Can I take it? Oh, no. Finish? One more question. Okay, cool. One more. Yeah. Listen to read snippets. Yes, because read snippets, structured data can also be used for voice search. So that's one more use. There are a lot of uses for structured data. Yes. Google doesn't do a verification. If you tell Google that you're selling a product, but you're, well, if you misrepresent some information with structured data, Google's gonna think that whatever you added in the structured data is correct. Or it would not even think that you're credible because you your website says something else and your structured data says something else. 
Google verifies it, but yeah, you can't verify. Why? Yeah, I mean. Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, but the time is up, so we can't take any questions. But you can, if you have questions, then I would really like to hear them. So you can just email them to me on my, sorry. So I, by mis I don't know how I deleted that, but it's web247, Neha at web247.solutions. That's my business website, and that's my Twitter. So you can just tweet it to me, or you can just uh, email me. And uh, the slide, I just tweeted the slides before the presentation, so they are on my Twitter as well. And the link, you already have the link. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.